How's it going, guys? My name is Savarish, and today I'm going to talk about a company that I don't really like all that much, BMW. You see, for the past few years, I've been saying that the high horsepower models, the M3, 4, 5, and 6, were unreliable. And for the most part, you guys, the internet, agreed with me, and I swore off BMWs since then. I didn't want them in my shop, I didn't want to work on them, I didn't want to drive them. However, the internet also told me that there was one very reliable exception to the unreliable BMW rule. And today, I bought one for $600 on Facebook Marketplace. And on second thought, I probably should have gotten something nicer. So if you guys are new to my channel, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this because this is gonna be fun. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. Now, this car in front of me is a BMW 5 Series. More specifically, it's a 2007 BMW 525i. This is the base model for the BMW E60 platform, which was very important, but also very controversial because when this car came out, a lot of people didn't like how it looked. The design director of BMW at the time, Chris Bangle, made a name for himself by designing cars like this, namely the 7 Series, which had a rear end known as the Bangle Butt. Now that car was polarizing, but this car, I think, looks elegant and dare I say timeless because you have this amazing design that just flows into the rest of the car. You don't have anything that looks like an afterthought. This was a very well-styled car. However, the reception of these cars was quite good. They sold very, very well. This actually got BMW out of an economic rut. But later on, that is when all BMWs kind of show their true colors because these cars, this platform in general, was known for being one of the most unreliable cars ever made. And the main problems were in here, in the engine. The engines for these cars were extremely unreliable. They had issues with their Vano systems, which is like a variable valve timing thing. They had issues with their cooling systems, which were made completely out of plastic and they would literally explode. And then on the M5, you had the rod bearing issues, which would grenade an engine. Not to mention, you also had the transmission issues that made themselves known in that same M5, giving you a very, very healthy repair bill. However, this car is not one of the unreliable models, or so I'm told. This is a 525i, and this has a three liter inline six that apparently can run forever. So this engine is called an N52. It makes around 215 horsepower and around 200 foot pounds of torque. And if that doesn't sound like a lot, that's because it is. This is not one of the highly stressed engines that BMW puts in their high horsepower models. This, on the other hand, is one of the most reliable engines that BMW has ever made because it's based on the inline six that they've been developing and honing and making more dependable for the last few decades. Now, it's possible to make more power with this engine. Just slap a turbo or a supercharger on it, but you are stressing this way past its original intended mechanical limits. But it's good to know that this was essentially the test bed for the next iteration, the N54 turbo engine that made a lot more power in 335i and then that shared components with a b58 which is in the new toyota supra so to me that means that this car kind of sort of a, a little bit is a toyota supra but as we know german cars don't just have one achilles heel they have a few and this car was the most technologically advanced 5 Series that had ever come out in the history of BMW. So this had a ton of electrical gremlins that needed to be sorted out by the used car buyer. That's me, I'm the used car buyer. Now this car came out with something that was sort of radical when it came to BMW, and that was its iDrive system. Now the iDrive was an infotainment system, perhaps one of the first infotainment systems that combined telemetry, audio, navigation, basically everything was done through this screen in the middle, and it was good. No, the opposite of that. So what you got with this system was a very clunky and very slow experience and everything was done through this little toggle switch here. You had communication, navigation, climate, and entertainment, and it would never stop 
beeping, apparently. And as you can imagine, not having buttons here controlling what you would usually control got a little bit frustrating. However, in 2007, which this car is, they got an updated version of the iDrive system, which was a little bit better than what they had in the early 5 Series and 7 Series. It still isn't very good though. So now we have a car that has controversial styling, not a very good infotainment system, some electrical gremlins because obviously this is an older car and German cars aren't exactly good with their electrics, and an engine that is an unknown quantity, even though these engines are supposed to be the reliable ones. Now, how did I get this car for $600? Does it run? Does it do anything that it's supposed to do? Well, let's see. I'm gonna turn it on. Turns on fine. There's a bunch of warning lights, but you know, that's just regular BMW stuff. Turn off, tur tur there we go. So obviously for $600, I could do a lot worse. I actually bought this from a buy here, pay here lot that's used to selling cars just like these to people that can barely afford them. But it has four wheels, a steering wheel, it runs, it has a clean title. I mean, it hasn't been in any floods and it hasn't been on fire. That's a new one for me. Now, what I wanted to do with this car was ultimately issue myself a challenge because I think I've been unfair to the BMW community. And I think I've been unfair in learning a new platform because this car legitimately is pretty cool. Now, my challenge to myself is to have a BMW that looks great, that drives great, and to have a few little gadgets that bring it up to the standards of 2020. And it's also gonna be on a budget. So in this build, I'm gonna be counting every single penny. And at the end, we're gonna see how much it all costs and if I really stretched a dollar as far as I could. Now, in order to make this car as good as it can possibly be, we have to see what's wrong with it. And this car being as technologically advanced and as full of computer modules as it is, it probably makes sense to check all those computer modules before doing anything mechanical. And the way we do that is through this little thing that I've wanted to test for a very long time. And it's this little OBD2 dongle that connects through Bluetooth and it's called a Carly. So Carly is the sponsor of today's video and it's this really cool little thing. There's three steps, download the app, plug in the adapter, and then start the app. It's very simple. Just comes with this and you plug this into your OBD2 port. Now, any car after around 1995, 96 should have this standard connection. And this lets the Carly know everything going on with your engine. And as you'll see, a lot more. So the OBD2 port right here is pretty easy to get to. Usually it's underneath the kick panel, but right here, just pull this out. There's like a little cover. And then you just plug this in, the lights are flashing, and now all I have to do is go to my app. So now that we're in the Carly app, I'm already in the BMW 5 Series 2007 menu, and just says plug in the adapter to OBD2 port, turn on vehicle's engine. Okay, vehicle engine is on, connect with universal adapter, and it automatically finds it via Bluetooth. Right here, we see that the health of the car is bad and there was a few issues found. Now I did run a test right before filming, so I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna check for issues right now live. And it checks every single module in the car. Right now it's done about 30%. Two issues found, okay. Are we gonna find anything else? Three issues found, okay. Four issues found, oh boy, six. Seven. So we have the dynamic stability control, we have lights, we have air conditioning, car access system, and instrument cluster. So these red ones are very bad. Uh, the health status of this car is very bad. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that the car is like undrivable. Uh, the dynamic stability control, that, uh, we have a lining wear, lining wear achieved rear, and lining wear achieved front. So the brakes are either past their life expectancy or the sensor is just disconnected. I'm willing to bet that this thing is just very, very neglected. So uh, if that's all it is, we need to change our brakes. All right, we have defective taillight and we have a low beam broken right. So that is good to know. So I just have to buy some light bulbs and theoretically these should go away. Now, one of the things I really love about the Carly 
is this thing right here and that's customization. And customization means that you can change features about your car that didn't come in the car in the first place. So if there was like a European version with some weird features or some cool little gadget that technically is in the car that can be programmed in, this programs it in. And usually a dealer has to do that. So let's check compatibility. It's gonna check all the systems and then tell me which ones I can change. I'm gonna give a quick example, the light module. It's making a backup of the coding because let's say your coding messes up or your car turns off or the battery dies or something, it can still back up everything so you're back where you were. So our hazard lights are standard right now. Let me show you what I mean. If we go, excuse the camera work here, I press the hazard light switch and you see that it's just a regular hazard switch. There's nothing special about it but we can now change that hazard switch to a double hazard. And all you have to do is code car. It's coding the car right now in real time. Coding is successful. Now you'll see, I press the same hazard switch and it's double. This is so cool. So obviously this is no regular OBD2 scanner. This allows you to do so much more and it's perfect for tinkerers like me. I love to see what else I can do to my cars whenever I get them because I think my car should be a little bit special and I think yours should be as well. So if you wanna get one of these and I certainly hope you do, then go to the link in the video description below and pick yourself up one of these. This is super easy to use and it's absolutely gonna transform this car in this build. So go check it out in the link in the video description right now. So now that we've seen what's going on with all the electronic computer modules in this car, it really isn't that bad. And if you look at the body, it also isn't that bad other than this and this and uh, generally this. But right now is around the time when I take this car on a test drive and tell you everything mechanically wrong with it. Uh, <laughs> except for one problem and that is this car is full and I mean full of roaches. I don't wanna sit in that car, please don't make me. Now, as you may know, I don't have a detailing channel. I'm not Matt Mormon, I'm not Larry Casilla, and this is disgusting. This is something where I don't wanna to touch it at all. And since my channel is about building it better, I am gonna build it better by throwing everything away. That interior is going in that dumpster. I should probably put on a mask and gloves.
Okay, I have dispatched most of the roaches with extreme prejudice and uh, it's looking a little bit more sparse in here even though everything is sort of everywhere. Now what I have to do is take all the pieces that I took off and the usable ones I'll put over here and the not usable ones Ladies and gentlemen, this is a BMW 5 Series with no interior, but no roaches. I am really excited. We have evicted all of our unwanted tenants and it's smelling a lot better. It's looking kind of really dilapidated and everything is everywhere, but I can finally put this in the garage, well, in my shop. So I wanted to show you one thing that is really, really nasty. Take a look at that. That is mold or something. This is like a foam or a cream. I don't want to touch it at all. I accidentally touched it with my fingers and that's probably not great. But this is most likely what the roaches 
were eating or excreting or something. Needless to say, these door panels are going directly in the dumpster. And in addition, all the interior bits are going in the dumpster. Well, at least the ones that I don't need. Now, the reason why I took everything out of this car is so I can make sure that there are no creepy crawlies anywhere underneath the carpets. But another reason is because I wanted to change the color of the interior. The interior was this, you know, tan, beige color, not very luxurious. I wanted something a little bit nicer and something befitting a BMW 5 Series. But before we get to that, I need to put this car in my shop because it is getting a little bit dark. So uh, I don't even know if the car starts or runs or anything. We disconnected a lot. Uh, that's uncomfortable. Okay. Here goes nothing. Come on, come on, come on. Battery's dead. That was very luxurious. Okay, so we have de-roached this very roachy car. We took out the interior, the headliner, everything in there that would make this a breeding ground for those nasty, nasty bugs. Also, we took off the side skirts, the fenders, front bumper, the headlights, and I still have to do some work in the back. But this car is coming along very, very nicely. But having said all that, this car is not gonna stay with me. I'm not building this car for myself. I'm building this car for somebody. I wanted them to have something very nice, very luxurious, very sporty, and also very reliable. So in the next episode, you're gonna see this thing come together. Uh, fingers crossed. Oh, uh, okay, well, that's one way to change the color.